The Hogs are hitting the field here very soon, folks. Just a couple weeks to play uh, in the SEC. We got uh, Ty Hudson here from Tusk Talk with Ty. It's right here on YouTube. Got to get on over there and get yourself set for some Arkansas football. Ty, what's going on today? Yo, Mark, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Always Straight off pleasure. the practice field. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I've only missed two days of fall camp. Um, just prior obligations, things I had going on, but, uh, it's been a mixed bag. We actually had some pretty good weather earlier in the week. We had, we had cloud coverage and a nice cool breeze. I don't, I don't think it broke, but about 70, 76, maybe 78 degrees. It was nice, nice little cool breeze. And then it went away. And now we've got this, uh, we're back into the typical Arkansas August weather, which kind of sucks with the sun blaring down on everybody. I feel for those guys in the pads, man. They're, they're certainly getting the running backs involved in the passing game more. Uh, and, you know, I was I was there last fall camp. Of course, Kendall Browse was the offensive coordinator then. I don't know that I saw them with as many drills uh, throwing the ball to the uh, – throwing the balls to the running backs. And that's in fastball, which is kind of like their mini scrimmage period that we we're not allowed to film but we can watch. Uh, or just in their individual drills. They're, they're practicing on these running backs, you know, they're trying to get into the repetition of of uh, of catching catching throws uh, from the quarterbacks. So I certainly believe we're going to see a little bit more of that. They're going to be throwing to the throwing to the running backs. If that means it's more screens or or check down targets, whatever. But the backs are going to be involved to some capacity uh, in the in the passing game of this Dan Enos offense. AJ Green caught uh, just six passes last year, but Rocket Sanders did catch uh, 28 out of the backfield. And of course, Dominic Johnson is another factor there uh, that uh, they may want to utilize out of the backfield. Very good. Uh, do you think that this defense is on its way to getting fixed? So there's been some, there, there is some, there's positives here. You know, their depth along the defensive line is as thick as it's ever been. I mean, it's, it is uh they're deep at, at the interior defensive line spot. I mean they're they're at least five guys deep that you feel like okay, they could they could be contributors. Are they are they truly SEC caliber defensive linemen? I think yeah, I think at least four out of the five, maybe all five are. And what does that mean if you're typical SEC quality? Is that are these guys that are one day we're gonna be talking about, you know, when when draft day comes around, maybe it's possible. Uh, but I feel like we've been down that alley before and yielded very few results or none at all. But uh, I, I certainly that is something that has stood out. Like they, uh, it feels like they can, they can, they can throw out, you know, any number of guys at the interior spot. I mean, they are again, they're deep with guys like Torn Carter, Anthony Booker, Kyvy Rose, who was a transfer. So was Booker actually from Maryland. Uh, Cam Ball, Eric Gregory, guys like that. You know, they're they're it feels like they're in a, they're in a good situation this year. Last year, we, you know, didn't really know what to make of the defensive line. Of course they would end up the pass rush side of things was nice, but it felt like they were still lacking in depth this year. Feels like that's something that they uh, have corrected. Yeah. Because this defense gave up eight more points per game, which may not seem on the surface like a ton, but it is a ton more than the previous season. That's a hundred points in the season more than in 2021. And we know about uh, uh, the talent that they lost, especially in the defensive secondary uh, last year. So uh, they got to get better there. The schedule is in such a way with Western Carolina leading off that they can kind of ramp up toward that BYU game. And then even that's kind of a precursor into the LSU SEC opener. So it seems at least though the schedule is it's typically daunting self, at least it sets them up to improve and try to get ready for the big boys. Yeah. You know, if you're buying into the hype around LSU and I know more and more people are, um, that's that, that seems like, uh, well, you're thankful for those three games prior to LSU. I'll say that. I think they should run through all three of these first, these first three opponents, assuming everything that we that we've seen through practice translates onto the field during the regular season. Of course, we all know it just we don't know until we know, and uh, that's a saying. Actually, a friend of mine, Tim, says often. Shout out to him. He's a he's a viewer of both of our content. Um, but you know, he's right. You know, we, we don't know anything. We don't we don't know. What we don't know, and, and 
it's I could sit here and say, well, the defensive line depth is great. The tight ends are coming along. You know, the the receivers have stood out since spring, going all the way back to spring camp. They've stood out. But if it doesn't translate onto the field, then what does it matter? But I think if it does, they should run through these first three opponents. Like what they did to BYU at BYU last year, I think is something that they could replicate this year, that they could do at home in Fayetteville. And then LSU, again, if you're buying into the hype, I've seen people, reputable people on Twitter, put them as high as in the in the top five in college football. And I, I do believe they're going to be good this year, but I will say – you know, last year, and, and last year was last year, but they walked into Fayetteville and barely beat an Arkansas team that was without K.J. Jefferson, that same team that went 6-6. Six and six. Um, And also some of the things that have transpired in the offseason for them here recently. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really buying into LSU as a top-five team, but are they going to be a typical ranked or at least a ranked high-caliber opponent? Absolutely. And then you go on to A and M, and it gets pretty rough. I mean, you're you're on the road to Oxford, you're on the road in Tuscaloosa, and then you're back home on October 21st against Mississippi State, and then you're back on the road a little while later against Florida down in the swamp. So, yeah, it's a it's a uh, daunting schedule, and it's one that man, you you've got to have that depth, you got to have quality depth, and uh, and and bring your A game to every one of these. I don't think that there's a week where you can afford to bring your, your you know anything other than your A game, or you're in for a, you're in for a losing streak. LSU in the top five in the preseason AP and coaches polls. Mm. So that's what people yeah, are expecting. Right. Of course, they get challenged right out of the gate against uh, Florida State in Orlando on Sunday night. So for Arkansas fans, in, in playing in this division, and especially this season, shoot Alabama, by Alabama standards, is not supposed to be a juggernaut, but they're a juggernaut by anybody else's standards. They just have to figure out the who's going to play quarterback for them. LSU, again, loaded with talent, but haven't achieved much this particular group. Do Arkansas fans go into the season thinking if things break right, there's a path to a Western Division championship? I would just hate to start a season thinking – we want to get to a bowl game. Otherwise, there's really no hope of uh, aspiring to be anything beyond that. Well, I can say, listen to local radio and and reading Twitter, which I know you're not supposed to do, but I do it anyways. And uh, some of the screenshots and things I see from message boards, it seems like the casual Razorback fan just wants to get back, you know, to, to that 21 to that 21 stature where you shocked almost, I mean, you shocked college football when you won nine games, you know, you beat Penn state in a bowl game, you won eight regular season games, which they weren't supposed to do. You know, I think most people had them at about six, maybe seven wins and they, they go out and they finish eight and four. And uh, I think fans just want that expectation back similar to, to the way it was when Houston nut was here, which is so strange to say because they fired him after just winning eight games a year, you know, he'd won 18 games in his final, final two years. And they, you know, of course they ended up hiring Bobby Vitrino uh, to take his place. We all know how that worked out, but um, it seems like hog fans for the most part want to get back to that, you know, where eight wins is within reason and maybe anything beyond that. Now I don't speak for all the Razorback fans, but just from what I've seen, that kind of seems to be where most people have drawn the line in the sand. Like anything less than eight wins is going to be a disappointment. Um, I, you know, again, I have, I'm not giving my wins and losses away yet until the week of, until they get ready for Western Carolina. Um, but I, I, I get where they're coming from on that. And I think that that's probably, that's okay for hog fans to be in that frame of, of thought or frame of mind to, to you know, we ought to be in that eight win category. Um, you know, of course, there's the other side of the argument, which is why do you feel like you should be anywhere near that? I mean, you know, you won three, uh, eight, talking about regular season wins, and then six. And prior to that, what did you do, right? The prior two years when Chad Morris was here, what did you do? Brett Bielema's last year here, what did you do? Why do you feel like you should be in that eight win category? Well, because Arkansas's done it before. They were at a level, again, I just said they fired Houston Nutt because he wasn't 
you know, he wasn't winning more than eight or nine games a year. You know, that the hog fans felt like they could do better. Jeff Long felt like he could do better. And he, you know, certainly went out and grabbed someone who was capable of doing that and did do that. Uh, at least his final two years in 2010 and 2011 talking about Petrino, but you know, now that I think fans just want to get back to that. They want to get back to that. You know, we can win eight games a year, eight to nine games. And in this season kind of feels like it's, it's put up or shut up, but you know, do it, show us that you can do it. Show us the 2021 wasn't a fluke. Folks, we've got a new SEC channel. We would like you to subscribe. So all the SEC content that we provide is going to be on this SEC channel. So the link's in the description section, unless you were, are, of course, watching this on the new SEC channel. But otherwise, we got the link to the new channel there in the description section. But first and foremost, if you're talking Arkansas football, you got to talk with uh, Ty here and follow his work on Tusk Talk with Ty right here on YouTube, of course, uh, and check out Ty. Uh, Ty, I appreciate it. Uh, wish we could talk longer, but uh, that just gives me an excuse to uh, reach back out and get you back on here. Absolutely. Always look forward to it, Mark.